Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you want cheap RAM then where better to look than on good old AliExpress, right? In fact the first thing that popped up after searching for DDR4 was from Kalisa, excuse any incorrect pronunciation, available as either a single or dual module kit at stated speeds of 2666 or 3200 MHz, this sounds like a tempting purchase. So I did just that. I paid about £19 for a 16GB kit of 3200 MHz memory comprised of two 8GB modules. Delivery time was quick, as stated, and I was pleasantly surprised by the branded packaging. It certainly looks the part. The thin metal heat sinks are also branded and the stickers indicate the speed and CAS latency. To tell you the truth, this isn't the first time I've bought Kalisa DDR4, and last time I featured it as part of my £200 gaming PC build challenge with Iceberg Tech. There were a few comments under that video saying that CL22 memory was going to hinder gaming performance. The issue of compatibility was also raised. The description under the listing does state that this memory won't work with Ryzen 4500 and 5500 CPUs or G-series APUs. I'm not sure why this would be the case, so the first thing I did with this kit was try it with my Ryzen 5700G and B450 motherboard. Sure enough, I could not get it to boot. As I said, this is clearly stated by Kalisa, but just in case any of you are tempted to try it anyway with a non-compatible processor, my advice would be don't. As soon as I swapped out the 5700G for a different AM4 chip, namely the older Ryzen 5 1600 AF, my system booted into the BIOS, though the RAM read as undefined according to the B450MK2. It seemed to know the speed that the module should be, but I noticed that in auto or default mode it was running at 2666MHz. This was confirmed after I booted into Windows 10 and fired up CPU-Z. The CAS latency was also 20. This is fine because I haven't made any adjustments yet but I thought it was worth noting what this motherboard decided to default to. I ran Memtest for a few hours with no issues, played some games and went about my usual everyday computer related tasks problem free. Of course I paid for 3200MHz so I jumped back into the BIOS to increase the frequency. This RAM doesn't support the direct overclocking profile option so we can't enable that of course here but I set the speed to 3200MHz manually and left everything else at auto including all the voltage settings. Back in Windows, I ran the Memtest software again, and within seconds, we had hundreds of errors. And after about five minutes of regular usage, the system froze and blue screened. I then set the voltage to 1.2 volts manually, and back in Windows, I ran the same men test, which continued to throw up, albeit less, errors. This time, I used the system for a few hours before it blue screened again. Before switching to my Intel setup, I went back into the BIOS once more and set the voltage to 1.35 instead, while retaining the advertised 3200MHz RAM speed. At this point, I was a little concerned that I couldn't utilize the spec RAM speed without problems on my AMD board, but back in Windows 10, with a manual voltage setting of 1.35, this memory worked perfectly. There were no mem test errors and no blue screen crashes. I was able to edit some videos and play all my favorite games without any problems. My test system is a little mismatched in terms of CPU and GPU, but that's besides the point here. I then switched to my Intel rig where things ran a lot more smoothly right out of the box. As soon as I slotted in the RAM modules and booted to the BIOS, the Kalisa memory defaulted to 3200 MHz at CL22, the advertised specs with 1.2 volts. In Windows 10, I ran the mem test once more, which ran for hours with no errors, and there were no issues playing games, editing videos, or generally going about my daily computer-related tasks. Now I can't make assumptions for a wider sample of systems, but this RAM offered a much more straightforward out of the box experience with my Intel setup as opposed to my AMD one. Results will surely vary on a board by board basis, and it's worth noting that when I used this memory before, albeit with an AMD Ryzen 3100, it ran fine at 3200MHz CL22 with 1.2 volts out of the box, so it could just be that it doesn't like the B450 board I use today, or the Ryzen 1600 AF processor. To finalize, I wanted to compare some gaming results from this CL22 memory to my Corsair Vengeance LPX CL16 kit, which was double the price, around £40 at the time of purchase. I tested just a handful of games, but even from this small sample, we could see some frame rate differences. These were mainly with the percentile lows, which represent consistency and were slightly better with the Corsair RAM. When it came to GTA 5, however, the average was better as well. 
Now in conclusion, for the price I paid, I can't complain too much about this Kalisa memory. Again, I apologize if I've been pronouncing it incorrectly. I'd avoid it if you have certain unsupported Ryzen processors, of course, as stated on the product page. And it's worth noting that you might find yourself making a few manual adjustments. This is going to be board dependent. For complete peace of mind, spending more on a better known brand will always make more sense if you have the budget to do so, but it's clear people are buying this memory, lots of them. And if you find yourself wondering if you should as well, hopefully this video will be of some help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.